This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy and other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. Today is brothers against brothers. We've got back to back regional rematches in our first day of the playoffs. We're down to our top four now here. It's Americas and the Pacific. Hello, everyone, and welcome to day six of Masters Madrid, coming to you live from the Madrid Arena. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I'm back here on the desk with Mimi and Hypog. Welcome back, guys. How was your rest? You're not going to mention the 15 stuffed animals we have here, too? It's freezing, kind of freezing right over there. Freezing right over there. I mean, you feel free, Mimi. We've okay, got about 10 we, seconds. We've got about <laughs> 10 seconds. Attack the bear, attack the bear, attack the bear. Uh, Dan, 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 the penguin. The bunny, there's only one bunny. Attack the bunny. No, Taxi there's bunny. three bunnies. There are three bunnies. Oh, you I missed didn't out the bunnies. Them. We're going to have to redo it another yeah. time. From the top, from the top. Yeah, yeah. After the, the break, Mike, I think you can have a go as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I it's, don't it's gonna like be that. You. It's no. going to be you. So you nailed it, you nailed it. Well, uh, normally, uh, this is where we do a recap of the last few days' matches, but I thought uh, we'd shake things up today and do it a little bit uh, differently with some wordplay. This scares me. Uh, you shouldn't be scared, don't worry. This is how it's going to work. We're going to show a round uh, to Mimi and to Mike, and both of you will have to cast it with some specific words uh, that we've given you to work into. It's completely random word generate. Are they generator. Spanish? What kind of words um, are they? They're English. I think Words. Yes, and I think Alex was the one that did it, so you can trust her. I feel like okay. you can. Also, they're English. Okay, trust. well, that's yeah, 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 a yeah. little bit of a relief. Uh, Mimi, you are going first, okay. and you are given the task of casting a round of Paper X versus oh, KC. Oh, hey. well. Negotiate extraterrestrial and dough. Have fun extra with this one. Extraterrestrial? That's free. Okay. All right, let's start the clip. Roll it. All right, where are we? Uh, round 17 here. KC setting up for an A hit. They're going to use this Yoru to dive in to start this one and try and negotiate their way forward off of this ultimate from Martin. Spotted out towards the backside. Nere on the dive, but just clearing the first section of this site. Now into the back lines, Forsaken just needing the kills like dough or something. <laughs> nah, like come on. Lines. Now the flank becomes the biggest factor in this round. Paper X will work their way back on through, and the dog doesn't clear the close corner. Tamazi has already found one and has more for his troubles ahead of him. Support from a flash across the way. It's from downtown, an extraterrestrial even making his mark on come the on, round. Come that on. was That was no, good enough for government work. No. And they're going to finish this off. Magnet gets to, and it's a quick rotation back over towards this B site. Plant should come down in time, but there's already Mind Freak ahead. He's on the angle. We'll find a shot and knocks him out of the park. Last man standing in a 1v3. Doesn't have much of a chance at this one. Nade forward, flash on his line. Narrate on the swing. Already gets a double and got it down to a 1v1. Divide. Biding his time on a drop this is a very long clip, and I'm still happy <laughs> I did all the words, but Tavai wins it. I thought you were gonna like work extra, extra. I can't extra say that terrestrial. word. Yeah, with like, with like mind free. I thought you were uh, gonna maybe do something. I'm not right, that smart, so maybe like that. you should have done it. Yeah, I can't even pronounce. Well, the word. I demand a recount because you started with yeah. negotiate, not negotiation. You didn't even read the word correctly. Negotiate, oh. negotiate. It's a different oh. conjugation. <laughs> The word, you, you, minus 30, I just got it in. Kevin, oh, Kevin <laughs> said, it was Kevin, it wasn't on us. Uh, but Hypox, since you think you can do better, how about we well, take a look at your round? Yeah. This is going to be, you think you can once, do uh, once I see it's my words, It's going to be loud maybe. versus EDG here. Oh, this is so free. This so is free. actually look at these really words. free. This is teed up. But loud EG. EDG. I'm worried about the round. Is it going to be another long one or? Here we go. Oh, oh. No, we're on this round, so she's right. So 6-2 to the score, round nine. See, so looking now for a little bit of pressure towards A main. Slow creep. Two is here with the operator. Trying to distribute some of that pressure ahead of this site coming through. Not an awful lot happening on this. Thank you very much for pressure. choosing this clip in particular because we're frozen right now outside. Two is pick onto nobody. Able to TP away now. EDG looking to counteract this. Trying to shift their transmission into the top gear. Boo. Ahead of this site here. A little bit cheesy on there, but. Now, actually, Smoggy acting as a taxi for the spike. Like I that. like it. Yeah, Coming through here. Yeah. A very slow round, actually. Why did we pick this one? 55 seconds left on the clock now. TP coming across. Haldong into sight now. Spike still not taxied into a site, but finally a making its way in. Double whammy, Mike. 
Actually, fault line coming through. That's going to distribute some of the players on site elsewhere, but no pressure coming through. Spike finally coming through. Clip is lasting quite a while as well. 26 HP left on Kang Kang. Shut out here by QCK. 77 HP. I've already done the words, so I'm just going to keep talking over this clip. Unless you want me to redo one, you can tell me now. You, you want to do her to. words? Extraterrestrial? Negotiation. Okay, well, well, actually, yeah, now currently in negotiation for the retake coming through. Utility invested here. QCK going to drop Smoggy. Can't remember the other words here, but I think one was extraterrestrial. Held on, not looking so much, though. Shut down here. What was A your last word? A introduction of extraterrestrial by saying... No, and think load, get the dough. Load, oh. get the dough. Loud, oh. get the dough. Load, get the dough. Now, uh, I've, I've confirmed... A Freudian bars. snap at the end. Do I get deducted for well, that? Well, I or? actually have confirmed that neither of us won. And oh, we're no, both you, losers. You don't okay. have the power okay. to do that because I confer with Taktabani, who was the judge okay. uh, of wordplay, and he uh, told me that... Uh, Given that you're minus 30 points, I think Mike won it, but just the fracture of minus 25. I points. like both being losers. So yeah. There's a minus pops. five point in between you, but, but well here's done. the thing, at the end of the day, really the viewers lost. <laughs> yes, because they had to endure that. Yeah, <laughs> fair point. Yeah, well, uh, no, we let's uh, just <laughs> let's move on to something else because following Monday's matches, we did a draw for the double elimination uh, playoffs bracket coming into this, and it is a clean slate for our top four teams. This is the thing, we've seen these matchups uh, regionally before, but we haven't seen them internationally just yet. And there is also a lot of history with all four of those teams. But let's start with the easy one. Loud, Mimi, they won world championships uh, and they're back here. Again, with a different iter iteration of this roster, but still making top four. Yeah, absolutely. It's something new for this Loud roster. It seems like they're always running back, no matter who the players on the team are. Sidak will lead his squad into the top four to get to this point. And I mean, this game versus EDG for them was proof of that. Loud, I think, have continued to get better and better every Every game we've watched of them this tournament, and I mean, this match against EDG was just dominant. Yeah, time and time again, we talk about Loud maybe having a slower start. Masters events particularly, and kind of bubbling up towards playoffs and stuff, but I don't think we've ever seen such a performance versus a team like EDG to really bounce back. And yeah, on the other side over. as well, looking at Paper X, because uh, they've still not won a title. They've it's yeah. eluded Somehow. them yeah. every Somehow. single time. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is kind of nonsense that they haven't made it through yet. Obviously, last year coming the closest, but. Are you really sold that this is the championship winning team? That's the question I come into the playoffs, particularly with about Paperworks. Yeah, and I think it's 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 hard to say, right? Because most of their wins at the group stage were re relying on on heroics, on yeah. crazy step ups towards Shock the up. end. Shock we up. haven't seen them come out and like really dominate another top team yet. But it's Paperworks. It, it's so hard to ever count this team out. Yeah, and lastly for Genji and Sentinels, they haven't. Uh, well, I mean, Sentinels. It's been a very very long time since we've uh, seen them won a title. But how did Genji get here? They made top four. I mean, they lo they looked great regionally, and then they yeah. came out here. They upset Loud when they were looking weaker, and then they also beat an EDG in a in a two one series. There, for me, I haven't seen quite a ton of Gen G yet. It's really hard to place in my mind where they're yes. going to yeah. be in these playoffs. Absolutely great. I remember saying coming out of uh, after the, the the win over Loud, thinking that actually Gen G's performance in the follow up series kind of gave context to Loud losing that. Yes. Uh, it's anyone's game, I feel like, at this point. And that brings us to today's MasterCard fan poll. We got two regional rematches on deck, and we want to know which match you think will go the distance. We're going to go uh, three maps, maybe both matches. Uh, we get three mappers as well. So scan the QR code on your screen and cast your vote, and we will have the results a little bit later on. Also, make sure to use the hashtags MasterMadrid and VCT so we can feature you guys on the broadcast as well. Keep those tweets coming. Keep those tweets uh, coming. But uh, there's two people I feel like are never wrong. They have never been wrong ever. Me and Mike, I've heard right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's got to be yeah. us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's two people that have been very wrong. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> let's uh, send it over to them. It's Brand SciShow. See if they can accurately uh, predict the future. It's time for Bracketology. Hello and welcome to Bracketology. I definitely didn't almost trip over the board that we've got over there. Stage 2 Playoffs Edition. You may have just taken a sneak peek at my notebook. Don't worry about that. John Ryan's giving me some hidden instructions. The script? Potentially the script. Potentially. What, you got in there? what have we got in it? Well, number one is a regional matchup rematch of the Grand Finals because the fans love regional rematches of the Grand Finals. Well, get them in early. So get them in early. Yeah, we got them in early. The, the second one was no EMEA in top four. Okay, that's good. Riot hates EMEA. Okay, that's so good. We got that one out early. All right. So we got what next? Two. What next? Um, Paperx lose to the Grand Finals. Ah, oh, that's tragic yeah. for them. So Paperx, they make it to the Grand Finals. We don't know how yet, but they, they need to be well, in the Grand Finals. I think they probably make it through the lower bracket because Gen G are favoured, in my opinion, in this match. Okay. 
well, okay, but there's one team that needs to make a lower bracket run because John Riot really loves it when Sentinels play the most oh. matches possible. So Sen make so, it all the way through Sen the lowest? Yeah, Sentinels are going to lose their opening matchup. They've got to go all the way through the lowest into the Grand Finals. But if, but if Paper X lose the Grand Finals, that means Sen already win. Yeah, so Sen are going to win the Grand Finals. Unfortunately for viewership, it needs to happen, which means that Loud, Loud ends up winning here, but then they end up... So how do so Paper, Paper X... So must go through the top. Yeah, but this is good. This is good. Right. Because, because okay. th teams that do well in scrims, they need to go out early. So Genji have been undefeated in scrims. They've got to go out in two. Oh, so this is perfect. Perfect according to the script. We're right on schedule right now, honestly. So then that sets up another Loud v Sentinels yeah. at the bottom. Loud v Sen matchup. Well, and loud then won. Loud won, Loud and lose. Loud it's loud it's loud a repeat of the America storyline. Oh. Yeah. So Sentinels win. Oh, that is brutal. Yeah, but this it, fits, is, it fits every narrative. It fits every narrative that we could possibly want. I've seen nothing wrong with this whatsoever. Gutting. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. I mean, I said they're never right, but they whipped out the John Riot script, Mimi. Will they be right this I time? I mean, if you just look at history, you know they're going to be right. Every storyline they said there has come true in the past, it has to come true again. Paper X has to be second place, you know? Sentinels have to win for the... It just makes sense to me. Sense. That's, well, not, that's not what I got from that, but we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll move on. We'll wait and so see, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And speaking of storylines, nice. let's just dive into our first matchup of the day. It is the Pacific Grand Finals kickoff rematch between Genji and uh, Paper X. And uh, surprisingly, uh, Mike, when we saw this last time, it was not Paper X that came out on top. No, I think that was probably the, I don't want to say the big upset ahead of this, but I guess the fashion in which they closed out that series was very indicative. Obviously, the individual perform on this Genji roster was what carried them through to a pretty comfortable scoreline in the regional finals. Yeah, absolutely. And and this was a paper X at the time, who I think was really still trying to figure themselves out. They were doing still. a lot of, and they kind of still are, right? They, they were doing this thing that we saw at the beginning of last season too, where they're pulling out all these new different comps. They're kind of trying to discover who they are again. And Genji, on the other hand, they came out swinging this season. They had really clear identity the entire time they were playing in Pacific. They are a structured team that has very good mid rounding, that has very very good fundamentals and has players that can absolutely pop up. And I feel like all of those storylines have continued through to their run here in Madrid thus far. It's the same style of play. It's the same performances from players like Texture, from Caron. But the, the other thing is, is that Paper X have really improved in the time since that grand final. Well, this is the thing about Paper X, of course. Uh, they they thought maybe after DRX getting knocked out, they would be the one uh, to take the title, take the crown, but it did not happen. However, we did hear from Coach Alex after the press conference when he found out that they will be facing uh, Genji again, and this is what he had to say. I hope this time around we managed to shut Texture down, beat up Caron, try our best. They really manhandled us last finals and we hope we get it right this time. I mean, uh, Mike, for the sake of their uh, tournament run, we do hope they get it right this time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think individually, I mean, identifying the threats here, Texture and Caron both individually, I think, having a top five performance so far at this event. Quietly, Caron, Texture more so the headliner, but um, the concern being really for for Paper X is, is around who is that front line, right? With all this kind of composition shifting and I don't want to say losing themselves a little bit, but trying to figure out what the next step of W Gaming is, which Alex has said time and time again. It's a hot discussion right now of whether or not Paper X are actually on the right track to find sustainable improvement. I mean, it's easier said than done, but for more on Paper X, let's send it over to Mika Fabs, who caught up with Mind Freak. Hey, Mind Freak, what's going on? Feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling all right. All right, so Genji, of course, gave a very strong performance against PRX in the Pacific Finals, which wasn't too long ago. What do you think is different with, PR, with, different with PRX this time around, and why shouldn't Genji assume that they're fighting the same team? I think actually we feel the same, like nothing is different because like right now, like we said before, our team performance is not our peak performance yet. So maybe right now we're just playing in not, not in their home turf, so yeah. All right, well, let's see what happens. Good luck. Thank you. I mean, if they're the same, they, they yeah. lost, right? So Mimi, uh, this doesn't seem like a good sign. Yeah, it, it's so weird. Paper yeah, X's really tournament really has weird. had the lowest confidence we've ever seen from them. Alex comes on the desk, he's like, yeah, the boys have no confidence. We're yep, a six yep. out of 10. We just don't have it. But seemingly, they lack all that confidence. And every series they've played at Madrid thus far, they somehow find it in themselves, the second half of map three, and then probably lose it again. Yeah, it, it, it's so strange to, and we were talking about, you know, not really knowing where to place Gen G, but Paper X has always had this kind of image of like, what Paper X do we get, right? I mean, we've seen examples here, the second half of Split versus Heretics is like, 
one of the peaks of Paper X, to, to be honest, on the international stage, in my eyes. The way they performed in that second half is up there with some of their best performances. But, I mean, they're saying they, they lack confidence. They're at a 6 out of 10 right now. They're making weird composition changes that don't really make a lot of sense from the outside looking in. And then we get to interviews and they're like, yeah, we, we kind of don't know what we're doing at times, but it worked. Yeah, but that then brings us to the question you were asking earlier, Mike, of like, what is the next step for yeah. this team? Because that's what Alex The logical saying, right? next step, but then you throw logic out the window because it's vapor. Yeah, that, so it's... that's the thing. But when you look, when you try and apply logic to this team, it doesn't make sense. For instance, some of the comps they're playing, they're, they're running a comp on Lotus with no Sentinel, playing double duelist, double And still double with the Sky without as a well. Viper, <laughs> with the old Sky. Like, so many of the decisions they're making seem so off. And in the past, when we've seen Paper X make these decisions, we get things like they're they're like Reina Sky comps where they're cooking, they're coming up with something creative. But nowadays, it really does feel like some of these ideas are slipping through the cracks. But that stands in contrast to moments where this team is looking incredible. Yeah. Like you brought up, that second half of Split. I think when they're playing on Bind, that comp, very well thought through, very well cooked. Paper X really seems like a team in transition right now that it's, again, so hard to figure out where to place them because of that. I, I'm just going to, I mean, I'm an OG paper girl. I'm going to come in and maybe <laughs> channel a bit of paper thin uh, as well for this. Is okay. that every single time people do have those questions, is this the end of W Gaming? When do they stop getting away with this? They get away with it. So, I mean, you know, look, we've I, seen it. We've look, been here before. We've been here before. I absolutely, I still think they're the most entertaining team to watch. I think that's kind of undisputable. Yeah, but when you hear them coming out and talking the way they're talking, that's when you make them doubt a little bit. Yeah, and we're going to talk about Forsaken as well, because Forsaken has been on it, and we've seen the rays come out of him, Mimi, uh, for the first time here. Yeah, I think in terms of things that have improved since that Pacific final, Forsaken is a big piece of that. He wasn't doing too He's great nuts, when yeah. they played regionally. Yeah. And at Masters, Madrid, this guy has showed up and looked incredible. He's picking up the race. He's playing seemingly every role possible. The guy playing the most agents in this tournament right now, and he looks electric on all of them, while also being a big voice in this team, Mike. Yeah, I, I think as well, if, if this is an indicator for kind of maybe rethinking some of the compositions, obviously Monia having a, a different place within the team, putting Forsaken back in, I don't want to say the driving seat now that Jing's gone, but uh, maybe building some compositions that are more focused around Forsaken and his current performance and form could be the key for Paper. And we've seen that, right? They're switching him onto raise on maps. Yep. They're giving him those moments yep. where he can be confident. And, and these are the things we have to walk away from. That is why Paper X is a contender, because Absolutely. they have players stepping up. Because even if something's having a bad tournament, you still have Forsaken, you still have Munyet, you still have guys who will step up and win these games, even against the best. Yeah, and the thing is, you say put him on. He's putting him himself on those things. Alex yeah, even said yeah, it's yeah. Forsaken that comes up with this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Genji's Munchkin actually had a, 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 an opinion of Forsaken's raise. And I don't think you can get a higher <laughs> praise, Hypog, on a raise than <laughs> saying that you look like Jing. <laughs> yeah, that's up there with some of the best accolades you can receive. Um, uh, again, it just came, it, it comes down to the sustainability for me, is what is the go-to? What, what is kind of the, you know, the, the I, I guess the new form of these compositions and whether or not uh, Forsaken switching onto the Rays is something they adopt across the rest of the map pool, or not something now with uh, picking up the Gecko more and more, if that's something that he tries to adopt a little more, what, what is the change? Yeah, and the last time Texture caused him a lot of problems back at the Pacific final. And speaking of Texture, let's send it back to Mika Fabs, uh, who was waiting to hear from Texture, actually. Check this out. Hey, Texture, come over here for a bit. I uh, hope you're feeling good because today is going to be a big, big day. This is the strongest that Genji has uh, looked so far. A lot of people think the same thing. Uh, what do you think contributes to the team's success uh, here at this tournament? And we have Eric here to help with uh, some translation. 지금 현재 젠지가 정말 좋은 경기력을 보이고 있는데 지금까지 젠지가 이런 성과를 거둘 수 있는 데 있어서 가장 큰 요인은 뭐라고 생각하시나요? 어 그냥 저희끼리 소통 잘 하고 그냥 총잘 쏘는 거 그게 다인 것 같습니다. Honestly, I think it's just us talking really well and hitting our shots really well. I think that's it. All right. Well, eager to see what you guys have prepared for Paper X. Come on, Linda. Thank you. Good luck. 
I mean, this is the thing with paper rags. They had a bit of confidence issues. They admit they're struggling. But Mimi, Genji are on the other side of the scale. They look and feel great right now. Yeah, and in particular, all of the wind conditions from Pacific have continued into this one. People ask, is Karen as a rookie going to be able to show up and look incredible? He's done that. Is Texture going to be able to maintain this performance? He's shown up. He's done that. I think there can be, though, an argument made that maybe they played some, some weaker opposition, right? They played teams when they weren't at their height. It was loud in their first match of this event. It was an EDG who was really looking like they were crumbling towards the end of that series. But I think that's not what I focus on. What I focus on is that they're on an international stage. They're playing against a variety of different styles, a variety of different opponents, and I think they're doing still a very good job of maintaining this structured style that they perfected in Pacific while still having the, the individuals to pop up when they need them. Sure. I mean, I would counter that by saying bringing a team like this with, uh, I guess, the international experience that here that some of these teams do have to come out and beat loud regardless of form uh, qualifying to Madrid sure. loud uh, that's got that's got to be a big bonus for them and, and the, the key thing for me is seeing the energy on stage it matches what uh, how Genji looked at regionals well I mean the opening series wise they struggled versus secret but still the energy was super high Karen was having standout performances time and time again Munchkin and Texture alongside that for me that they're, they're looking very comfortable I mean let's talk about Karen a bit more because on day one we did say how does he compare to the other rookies. We had a lot of exciting prospects coming from every single region, and now we've seen him in the group stage. How does he uh, compare? He, he looks just as good. Uh, quite honestly, he looks just as good. He could even look better in some of these games. He's still winning these clutches. He's still a consistent fragger. But what I want to talk about more is his presence on the stage. You look exactly. at this, these exactly. clips, every time his team is winning, even when his team is losing, this guy is standing up. He's screaming at the opponents. He's bringing the energy. He's such a young guy. This is his first global event. He's a guy they found in ranked, yeah, but he's bringing yeah. the vibe against the best. And having a player like that is so important for any team. And he's, he's dropping some cold lines as well. Was it before Loud? He's like, yeah, well, they won a championship when I wasn't even playing. I wasn't playing. even playing. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah, coming yeah. out here. He's got the energy. Too he's, cold. He's, he's, you know, transcending that to the rest of his team as well. And also mimicking that with his performance. In my eyes, I mean, I'll go ahead and say we're only entering playoffs now, but I don't think we've had such a quietly consistent performance from a standout controller rookie. Obviously, outside of Duelist, uh, any international event so far, I, I, I can't think of any If he keeps wise. this up, I really think he's in the conversation yeah. for, like, best rookie performance. I mean, Absolutely. Demon 1 probably last year was the next best thing, but this guy's getting close to, to, to keeping up that kind of performance. Hey, he was barely competing when Demon 1 was winning as True. well. So That's even yeah. crazy. We keep That's saying it's a new era. So. Yeah, that is the other thing. Uh, but it's time for the result of our MasterCard fan poll. Earlier, we asked you if today's regional matches would go the distance and you said that you believe the Sentinels versus Loud One will. I feel like, Mike, I think both games will. Yeah, fingers crossed for both. Yeah, that that, that yeah. would have been me for sure. Uh, no shock to see uh, Sentinels and Loud the winning is, a who, Twitter poll. People who don't think Genji and Paper X are going to go to three, who do you think is going to two out? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough call. Probably Genji. I, I, I feel like, like probably, yeah, but, yeah. but still, I feel like general fan sentiment has been very high on Paper X still. Yeah, and we won't have to wait long to find out. But first, let's find out today's map pool and check in with Victoria and our coaches. All right, welcome to the first map select presented by Omen of Playoffs at Masters Madrid. Um, Gen G, you are the higher seed as you came into Playoffs 2-0 from Swiss. So would you like Team A or Team B? Yeah, team B. Team B. So Paper X, you will be Team A, and we will start with your first ban. Icebox. Icebox, your ban? Sunset. Sunset. And map number one from Paper X? Split. Split. Side on split? Attack. Attack and map number two? Lotus. Lotus. Side on Lotus? Attack. Attack. Next set of bands starting with Paper X, you have Ascent, Bind, and Breeze. Ban Breeze. Ban Breeze. Your ban, you have Ascent and Bind. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Ben bind. Ben bind. Map number three by default is ascent. Paper X side on ascent. Attack. Attack. All right. Good luck to you both. Thank you.
Well, well, well. We've seen these maps already when they played against each other last time. Not in the same order. And Amimi Split is going to come up first. Uh, the one that Paper Rex did actually manage to win. Yeah, for Split, honestly, that's a map I don't have too many questions about. Both these teams play very sane comps. They've both been rocking with the double duels. I, I think what we should be fixating on this series is Lotus, because Paper Rex have struggled to figure that map out. We were talking about it earlier, Mike, but last time they played that double duelist, double controller with no Viper, no Killjoy. They got ripped to pieces by K-Core, and K-Core is excellent at Lotus. But I think that map, to me, is the pinnacle of where Paper X is still trying to find themselves, where they don't have a comp that really works. I think that weakness in the map pool could really be exploited today. Ab absolutely agree with that. I mean, I mean, it was a real head scratcher to see the way that they played that comp as well. It wasn't as if, you know, we've got the sky, you know, we're going to front load some of these rounds and be hyper aggressive, guarantee that we're in our sights, let the Astra kind of flourish it in a post-plant scenario. But um, it, it's... It, it's a bit concerning if they don't change that up. But the next question then becomes, it's like, where do they go again? Do, have they now had the time to re-prep? We know Paper X can turn around comps very, very quickly, but uh, it, it just feels like such a big gap between where they were versus KC and where they need to be to make Lotus not a glaring concern in their map. Board. I will also say, though, Alex, in the press conference, he said uh, the Lotus comp that they did end up uh, coming out with against KC, it was a Hail Mary. He was yes. like, we are struggling. That's just so terrifying we to hear. The, like... We had to do something, and uh, it was a good enough and no, no it wasn't <laughs> quite frankly it wasn't they got rolled they got rolled by Carmen Gordon I don't think the comp was good but the thing is it's Paper Rex and I hate to see I hate to say that because I love to be the person like oh they're not playing good comps they're gonna lose mm, they're, they're the team that's up but the thing is that this team seemingly even when they have that hole the maps that they have no business winning they continue that's to win at exactly. this event and that's the thing that's the hot topic right now is like oh you guys keep down Paper X and you know they always end up getting because themselves because it's, it's the logical thing to it's do it's the to logical thing them. to do but they are the team to defy logic yes. I just that that Lotus comp is the one that's a bit out the window. Sure. In my eyes, that's a little too far past it to really justify. But also not taking nothing away from Carmine Core being a fantastic Lotus team. Maybe was it, it was exposed, you know, exponentially more so than another team. I want to pull out from the map veto for a second and just talk about this rematch. I mean, yeah. first of all, <laughs> yeah. yes, he's correct. But but also for Genji, think about what this would mean if they could beat Paper X a second time. For so many of those players, it's their first time on an international stage. It's their biggest match ever. They made it to playoffs when so many people doubted them and now they're again playing basically the kings of their region if they could beat them a second time here in madrid make it into the upper finals guarantee a top three spot at their first global tournament that would be an incredible moment for this yeah, yeah, I think as well, when you think about teams and their first step onto the international stage or players individually, you talk about kind of validations, what does it? And claiming an international veteran like Paper X would be the second leg to closing out the grand finals regionally versus them in my eyes. Yeah, I, I, looking at the fan votes here, uh, Gen G fans, where are you at? Also, shout out to Ulysses, by the way, who's currently hyping out the Gen G fans and the Paper X fans as well. Uh, but where do you guys sit with here? Are you 11% feeling like Gen G? <laughs> I think Gen G's going to win today. I, I think I feel like they're favored in this matchup. I, I think especially looking at that, this map pool, seeing that Lotus has made its way in. Yeah. Genji have just been so consistent throughout 2024. Their players have been stepping up to a new level, and it really feels like at some point, the Paper X magic won't be able to work anymore. This is the thing, it comes back to the same old for me. My heart says Paper X, my, my head says Genji, yeah. unfortunately. I think as well, if some of these individuals on Genji continue their performance, or even you know start improving on the performance we've seen far, you know, bubbling up with the, the tournament now coming into playoffs, a little bit more prep time that's a real concern for paper x if they're going to try and pull out some comp changes or really switch up the way they've been playing if they've gone into that level of detail of the games we've seen already here in madrid yeah but that's the thing uh, we do have also another curse you know we got the uh, the night three curse we have a few curses in this tournament but whenever there's a rematch Whenever that happens, it does feel like the team that's lost before is somewhat favored going into it again. Yeah, there certainly is. Yeah. I, I think there's a, there's a pressure to do more, to improve, to look back on that match and learn from it. And Paper X is a lot better than them. The individuals have stepped up. They've gotten closer to finding their identity again throughout this tournament. I, I think that this is a moment for Paper X that if they can dispatch Genji here, make it on forward, this is finally the game where it can kind of 
dispel the doubts that everyone has had around this team, around if they can do it again, on, on if they just have to rely on these hero plays, especially if they can do so dominantly or in two against Gen G, which I think will be really tough against a good opponent. I don't think this is in two hard. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think there's any world where that happens. But if they can come out here and get a confidence win, not only is that people looking at them better, but for themselves, right? They're still rating themselves a six out of 10. Exactly. They're, they're still low confidence. I they're think always they need a 10 a win out of 10 today. for me, always. <laughs> no bias, no bias on no, the desk no. here at all. But no, I, I absolutely agree. I, I, I think as well, it's it, it's really telling if, if to hear Paperx talk the way they have, they haven't spent these last few days trying to reinvent the wheel almost, because that's that's the level of extreme I think they need to go to. To hear Alex saying, W Gaming's run its course, we need something else, now's the time to pull it out. And as you said, Mimi, this might just be the one that actually gives them the confidence that they need. We are down to our final four team. So let's get the playoffs started. It's Genji versus Paperx and Sentinels taking on Loud. Day six of Masters Madrid starts right now. High five each other real quick. <laughs> I remember playing against you guys in screams back in, mm -hmm. in Iceland. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while yeah. since then. Uh, it's been that. a hot minute. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember you guys were were insane back then. I'm super. I'm super happy you guys are here representing yeah. the NA with us. It's good for a change. Nobody is standing in Loud's way as Loud make their way to the playoffs easily. Uh, com certeza, acho que essa última partida foi o nosso pico de, de performance até agora no, no nosso time novo. Sentinels have done it. Sent City here to play. At this point, everyone wants to beat us. So far, it hasn't worked out for them, and I don't think it will. Cara, a adaptação do QCK está sendo muito boa. Eu acho que ele nasceu para jogar com o duelista. QCK, he just slaughtered BDG. At the end of the day, uh, anyone can like take it and win it. It's Valorant, so it's true. Just who plays better that day? Can we win the muscles between me and Genji? I mean, definitely. And even if we don't make it far, I hope they do win the trophy for us for the Asia Pacific League. Last game against Genji was a pet final, and we didn't manage to win. The playoff Genji was the first goal. Genji, this team looks scary. Valakia, it is a return to greatness. I feel like I'm going to win it. I can't believe it! Paperx keeping hope alive! Money played very well, especially with his calls and stuff. Like he's very confident, unlike the previous matches. I'm very proud of him. Our new kid in the block is ready. You're not gonna meet the same Paperx. 일단 저희가 이제 딱히 증명을 해야 될 필요는 없는 것 같고요.
We've seen this matchup before, and last time Gen G became the king of Pacifics. But this is a different stage, and a stage that Paper X have conquered over and over again. These teams, uh, they have faced in Pacific, but then that was Genji proving themselves for their first time. People could write that off as an upset, as a one-time run, but now they're here in Madrid. They've done it again. They've made it to playoffs. They have another chance. I think if they can beat Paper X today, they can cement themselves as the best team from Pacific coming into this event, as a team who could compete for that title. But they're up against a Paper X that no matter how logical you think about them, no matter yes. what you think is going to happen with this team, they always surprise. They always find that miracle. And that's what makes playing them so damn scary. Yeah, Paper X is the definition of any given Sunday, really, of what you get on the day. Especially now, we're thrown into the mix of potentials for composition changes to come out. Paper X looking back at their previous performances, not feeling fantastic about it. Genji now don't necessarily have a very familiar opponent in that regard. What other team will play a comp for the first time after scrimming it once and then show up and look terrible FPS. in the first half, win in the <laughs> second, no, no, not to no, the no, same yeah. level. <laughs> <laughs> Not to the same level, though, man. They, they show up, they make a miracle happen, and then you'll talk to them after and like, yeah, we just weren't feeling it. I mean, like, uh, they, they, they're ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, on the veins of Na'Vi, Angel, he does currently hold the record for the most agents played in a single tournament. But Forsaken is one away. If he just whips out a seventh, uh, a different agent He's going to play ISO I mean, in, this I mean, we see, yeah, we, we see in, the, we see the, the map half, here, yeah. In half the amount of maps, too, because Angel did it in 21. Oh, OK, so, OK. <laughs> So uh, maybe maybe that is the key. Like you guys said, Forsaken, he has been creating a lot of the stuff here. And at least individually, Mike, he's been doing well. He's on form. Yeah, definitely. I, I think just to double on from that, the real test for Gen.G would be as well, if Paper X do completely, especially the fact that we're, we're, we're starting where we are, to start on split. Uh, if, if that composition gets changed, it'll be another validation for Gen.G to come out, obviously prep out the window and just perform bread and butter Valorant, which they've shown time and time again. They've looked very, very clean so far here in Madrid in terms of curveballs coming their way. If they can do that versus a team like Paper X that are willing to just kind of push all in on a comp first time, bringing it out on the international stage, massive massive battle. The thing is, normally normally when we say that on a desk or on a cast about, oh, you have to do it against Paper X, that's the exception. Genji is used to that. They've played this team twice before. They know about the chaos, and they've adapted to it very well. We're in Agent Select, and it's standard for once in a Paper X standard? game. It's uh, double standard? It's double dualist guys. <laughs> it's the old standard from yes. last yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Teams have moved away from this, but it is still a good comp that I think works very well to these teams' play styles. Yeah, and I guess as well, banding the madness that was the Yoru comp as well, coming out from the split, which was the iteration that Gen.G played against last time in the regional finals. I'm looking in this matchup at the head-to-head -head between the rookies, Monyet and on the Absolutely. other side, yep. out from Caron. Both those guys have come out in their debut international tournament and looked incredible. They're both on the run for one of the best rookie performances we've seen. And probably been the two loudest on the stage as well. Yeah, well, let's get this Pacific showdown underway and send it over to your casters, who's been very familiar with the journeys of these uh, two teams. It's Mitch Mann and Tom Biz. Thank you so much, Insu, and our fantastic analyst desk. Yes, we're pretty familiar with these teams, as I'm sure they, they played are. ADG, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we heard it from the desk. The only thing harder than beating a team once is beating them twice. Paper X know that from EG over at Champs. Now it's an opportunity for them to give uh, Genji a lesson in that very same thing. Well, that's the thing. I kind of want to touch on what Mike said earlier, where it's like a, a head over heart sort of situation. I also think it's mind over mental mm. because the way the Paper X play is insane. So you kind of have to almost center yourself. We've seen teams do that throughout the tournament so far. The other problem for these teams as well is, yes, they've played each other before, but as it was sort of said in the interview there, like the video we saw just before, they would both like it if Pacific were able to win. They have never managed to win an international event. It's almost cruel that they get pipped against each other. The only good thing is they won't have to eliminate each other because one of them goes down and one of them yeah. goes forward. That's that's the only sort of saving grace for now. But it, it does mean that you're almost wanting to just, okay, both teams play their best so that whoever goes forward is going to be able to match up against America. So I think most people at the moment are favoring in this tournament. Yeah, it def definitely feels like fan sentiment. And even from what we've seen, Sentinels have just looked unchallenged throughout this tournament. Yeah. Other teams have had shakier starts, but we'll see. So what Loud did in their last game. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> I'd be scared of them just as much.
Well, you know, talking about this map in particular, we're going to see Split popping up. And actually, for the whole series, Split, Lotus, and Ascent, the first three maps of the BO5 that they played regionally, that Gen G won dominantly. Now, the reality is, coming into Split, Tom, it's not exactly the same. Because Paper X before, they were running Forsaken on a Yoru. Himself and something were diving in, taking so much space and winning almost all of their opening duels. I think it was 13-4, correct me if I'm wrong, where Gen G just got demolished yeah. on this map. So for Paper X, I understand why they've come in and changed their comps. Like we say, the hardest thing is to beat them twice. So they're bringing a new comp and a new philosophy on how to handle split. Question is, will Gen G be able to deal with it this time now that there's nothing spooky going on? It also seemed like, at least for pay breaks, once their comp was figured out, they were like, okay, let, let's change this one. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah. lost the EDG. We need to actually try and fix the things we've got going on. The thing is, though, the same can be said for their opponent because we saw uh, Gen G come in, switch into this composition, and just look incredible. Like the double duelist, especially. Actually, the only change they made was Omen in for Astra, just to allow them to be a bit more explosive. But I just remember that defensive half of Textra and Meteor. I think they both ended up with 22 kills, both were the best player in the server. It was like going toe-to-toe -to -toe all the way through. So it is one of those matchups, as boring as it is, where we are just going to go the duelist of the pinnacle. Like, these are the players we have to watch. The amount of times that Paper X would have just got absolutely banged if it wasn't for sake and just having life yeah, games. Yeah. But the thing is, it's every time he, he plays Split, he has a li uh, someone else's life game. It's not a Forsaken life game. It is, okay, for anyone else, that would be the best game they've ever played. Unfortunately, he does that every week. Well, we talked about this on the desk. I heard Mimi say, well, okay, if you think it's going to be 2-0, who is the team to 2-0 it here? And actually, looking at the veto, right? Split last time went to Paper X. Lotus was super close. I mean, if we go based on what we saw in the past, maybe the foundations are there for them to take that 2-0. But I'm expecting a three-mapper between these two teams. The best of the best. Pacific number one and Pacific number two. And it's time to throw down as the barriers go up on Split. Yeah, and it's looking like we're going to get a brawl to start things off. Both teams with the majority of their players set up outside this A site. They both run pistols in this direction before. Good nade coming out of Forsaken already and something. And Mind Freak peeking off the back of it. They're going to be stuck in the corner early on. This is a great start for Paper X. And Munchkin's in danger as well. He tried to jump away. The Boombot was chasing him. Munch yet caught him. And for Gen G, two versus five. Barely any damage done. At least they've still got the spike but they have to hope for some serious mistakes at this point. The Paper X go running forward or even rotate, assuming that it's a B hit. But you can see there's <laughs> there's no real need for panic on the defensive side. They're just going to hunker down and wait for Gen G to take a step forward and give them the first pistol round win. Yeah, I, I think uh, the scary prospect as well is that on this map in particular, we have seen some sort of rougher <laughs> attack sides out of Gen G. Obviously, that is helped a little bit by having that Omen instead of the Astro. But other than that, it's an absolutely flawless start to this one. Now, as I said, expectations for Paper X is this is the map that they'll win. If it's going to happen in this series, I think the next two I, I would favor to Gen G, even more so because of the fact that we saw recently on Lotus the changes to the comp for Paper X, and I'll be honest, I didn't like it. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't look good. So this is the map that I feel like Paper X have to win. The problem is, throughout this tournament, I've said that, and then they've won the other map because yeah. that's just how they are. They just managed to adapt. They have the individual players that sometimes they can just frag through a map. And, and that is rare. Like, it is very difficult to have people that are on that level. At least from the games we've had, Tom, it, it has been an insane percentage of teams trading out their own map picks, losing your pick and winning your, your opponents. Gen G, they've not got off to a great start. And as the push comes in, okay, actually they're getting close. The pressure's kind of being applied to Munyet now. Blinded up, he's taken down. Okay, it's not a bad start at all for Gen G. Gaining uh, some ground, now winning some more fights. And with heals up, okay. It looks like they've tidied it up eventually. But that got very scary for a moment. I, I really, I would love to see Forsaken's POV in that. Because what it looked like he did was jump down from the heavens with an outlaw in hand and try and face their entire team. Now, that would be ridiculous to even crazy. attempt. A but crazy. But do you know who he is? He, yes, I do. He, he, well, he's, he just lost his gun. It's now been given to something, and he's bought a judge to replace it. So that, again, if, if, you're, talking about, <laughs> if you're talking about Forsaken, he, he's basically answered the question himself. Well, uh, it looks like we're going to be using that dash very early on for something. He's getting aggressive. Wall goes up. He's ahead of it. Look, to take someone down. He got the shot off. 10 HP left on Meteor, but that's the one problem. If you're the one taking contact with that outlaw, you don't, you're not going to kill the player. Sky. You need to get out. 
That's the thing. They, they can just heal him back up. So that it's it's actually not that problematic for what was an early battle. You can already see heading over in that direction. Munya is going to get aggressive as well. Bear in mind, this purchase is fairly weak for Paper X. Normally, you'd see a rifle or two in the mix, but this is just SMGs. It can work more so on Split than probably any other map. This crossfire is fairly nasty, but that's the thing I've really enjoyed about Gen.G. They've been methodical. They've been careful throughout this tournament. They are not one of those teams that are just aggressively running in and blitzing their way through rounds. They can. They have the skill to do it, but they're always, especially in these sort of rounds, very careful. And it looks like caution's paid off for them. Whatever noise they made on A has sold it to Paper X. who are now running the gamble on an A stack. Of course, there's an outlaw there that could be retrieved. I, I doubt it even will be. It's quite far up, and the player that will pick it is in heaven because that spike plant should be coming down in a little bit. Paper X, left. hear no noise, see nobody here. There's a flash still on the Vi that could be used yeah. to clear outside of it, but this late on in the game, you're just going to sit there, hope they dive into you, and as we can see, they've gone to the exact other side of the map. So for Paper X, uh, you know, it's hard to get back into a site with, with these yeah. weapons as well, especially a site like this where pretty much every fight on the way in is long range. <laughs> see, normally you talk about, okay, maybe going down to the spike or just trying to hold for exits, but I am waiting for Forsaken to attempt to try and blast back through something, and already, Mind Freak taking a lot of control. Now, Texture in a, a fairly solo position. There's a chance. There's the blast back already. And there's the judge. Exactly what Forsaken does. He got a rifle, but it's very short-lived. Well held by Jet G, even with a little bit of chaos. Yeah, I mean, they, they spread themselves out there. Lots of space. So even when that judge gets up close, he's only getting the one, and it's an immediate drop. The rest of the players, easy to deal with when you've got that kind of weaponry advantage and you're not caught out of position. Two to one. It's a fairly bog standard start to the game. Pistol win for Paper X, follow up, and then they lose. I mean, the one thing that we'll say is that maybe that third round could have seen a bit more damage out of that side. But again, they did gamble on a site. It didn't work out. This is what happens. The opportunity, though, to deal that damage here as we get the operator out on something right away. And the shot has not landed, but yet good for one and drop the B site under threat. But Gen.G back off. The whole time they've been leaving Meteor outside of A to catch a rotation. He hasn't found one, but one can assume that rotation's going on through the spawn right now if you're Gen.G. They don't know that Mind Freak's still very much close. Yeah, they also flash mid on the defensive side. So they, they have the information that there was no one there. So they're able to gamble an early rotation in towards this A site. Forsaken, still with the judge, is just going to make sure he keeps control in mid, but it's slightly more stacked up than you might expect. The only problem is uh, he might get caught. He's switching between utility. Finally, will pull the gun out, but the aggression of his teammate gets absolutely nothing. And while uh, there is the four of the judge, not going to find anything more. And for something, I hope to God he's going to save. It's Ended. not the round you want to see him throw his life away for, is it? A 1v3 with the op, possible, winnable, but not to be. If he had a few more kills along the way, uh, a few more orbs picked up, something like that, maybe he'd risk it with the blade storm. But even then, the op is just so expensive. He mm. doesn't want to throw it out. And for Gen G, I, I think they're sort of realizing that they heard the op earlier on, right? They know that it's in play right now. So they're gone spread out, already sending Munchkin to try and find this player. And uh, based on the time, it looks like he might be safe. They'd have to start hightailing it in that direction now. So an off for the next round, but just look at the credits on Paper X. It's not like they're going to be able to fully recover into a, a standard buy. I think the pendulum's kind of swinging in Gen G's favor now at 2-2. Two two. Economy's under their control, and ults will come online soon. Yeah, and, and as I said, when we saw them play against CDG, they had a really stellar, aggressive, and confident defensive side. So I think for them, any sort of grinding out of these early rounds is going to be really important. Sure, you're still going to have an operator onto something, which alone can be enough to cause issues in the round. But as I said, they, they've been methodical. Their utility's been good. They instantly had a, a snake bite that went through to deny him that early aggression. It, it's expected at this point. By the looks of things, they may even just be going for an early A take. They are all set up outside. I liked what I saw last last round. I don't know if you caught it in the replay, Tom, but a fist bump into a high five. Let's see how many high fives there are for Genji after this one. They've got a lot of space, oh. but that flash was perfect. Deadly from Devai. And he's managed to slip away towards the elbow. Another fight. And he's actually got a teammate in there. I don't know if they've seen Forsaken, but they certainly have now at heavy cost. Smokes are down, but so too are the majority of Paper X players. It's only something left, but he has that off. 
1v2 he didn't go for. The 1v3, it's tempted him. It's pulled him in for the fight. He hasn't found them to start off, though, and that dash already halfway up. Wants to close the distance. So many tough angles, tight angles to clear with this op in hand. And no idea there's a player up top. He's checking the right angle. What a shot. But Lakia was close by, ready for that play. A third round found for Gen G. They're running away with this early game. Yeah, still a, a close round for what was invested. That was a, a decent stack up in the early stages for PaperX, just basically having the majority and uh, somehow managing to dodge some shots that I, I don't really know how they did, but bringing it down to just one player surviving, keeping that economy a little bit more honest for Genji. And well, you, you see the danger of how fast this man is with the operator. The problem though, is he's not gonna be able to have it for this round. They didn't have the extra finances and the quick trading again, the fundamentals of Genji sublime. One kill, one death as well. So he's still two away from a blade storm. So we're down to just that rifle. But as we said, ultis were coming online. We saw the Seekers used by Lakia, finding a lot of information. This time around, Paper X have theirs, but also a showstopper online. That's a big weapon to have in the back pocket of Forsaken and could play a role later on in the round. For Gen G, you can see their spread. This is a full default play. At this point, they're expecting Paper X to make some adaptations and to throw out some of that signature early round aggression. Still hasn't happened though. They're, they're happy to bunker down and wait for that push to come through. And like I said, the other problem here, Genji have a lot of credits built up. If Paper X lose this round, it's gonna be a skyrocket. Oh, maybe when. Uh, that is not the start they were looking for. Two players down immediately. Down, Forsaken yeah. spin and hero before, but down to just five HP. That's not really gonna work too well for them. And the Seekers oh, the, went towards mid, but also in towards the A site. The, the realization's there eventually. Mind Freak can win this battle, it could be huge. I, I don't think they're going to expect him. It's such an obscure position to be in, but then it's almost revealed. Dubai, though, has done well. Bringing back two kills. The spike left. just about making it to the site, and it is going to bait standing. in. Nice work from the side of Munchkin, teaming up with Texture. It leaves this man who did get healed up early in the round. As said, he's been ever so devastating. Showstopper might just be able to clear shoots it into the Viper's Pit, but actually, Munchkin's just teamed up with his teammates, just left it. Doesn't even mind about the pit. I don't know if Forsaken realized it, but it doesn't even matter. Loses the fight to his counter raise, and the march continues on for Gen G. Gen G are having a field day right now. Like I mentioned, the economy was in their favor. The ults that were there for Paper X burned up in that round to try and gain some semblance of an advantage. And Divide did incredibly well. Uh, in his position, he stayed down in screens, waited for the swing out with the player Munchkin up top almost sacrificing himself because he's so out in the open. They swung to try and trade him, and Divide had that beautiful off angle to just rip them to shreds. We're seeing elements of, the, of that team play there from Paper X. We're seeing individuals win some of their fights, but it's not enough right now. Gen G have come locked and loaded with a huge lead to start. I mean, it's double the rounds, but it's the economy that's really the problem for me. You've got players 7K, 5K, five and above is average for the Gen G side right now. Paper X, they're gonna be on stingers, weaker weapons, no ulties to fall back on. They ain't looking great. Off rip. Already, Gen G have found the same number of rounds they did last time they played Paper X here. Yeah, I, I said it, it's looked like a different beast. It, I, I think they're a team that have done really well with the coaching staff, someone as legendary as Solo. I, I don't think you're ever gonna have the, the same mistakes twice. This guy has been around the block multiple times and even just giving him a moment to talk here is gonna be beneficial for them. Mind Freak off to a bit of a slow start as well, but also it, it's, it is just reliant on those individuals a lot of the time. I, I think we saw uh, some of the statistics posted earlier is like, it, you compare the 5v4 conversion, Gen G, I, I think it's like 70 something percent. Okay. For Paper X, it's only like 60 something, but then they have a higher 4v5 yeah. because they, they have those individuals that can turn rounds on their head. It, it's not the greatest stat you want to have ever <laughs> because you'd rather just be winning the rounds outright. But they need some of those heroes to come online because they've been okay, but it's not been enough to take rounds off Gen G. I haven't seen the numbers of clutches from Gen G versus Paper X, but Paper X also do very well in those late rounds. Players like Forsaken previously bailed them from so many situations. Now, weaker weapons, like we said, and close range surprise factor is probably the best way to find value. Mind Freak has at least picked up one, but Karen is making this one look easy. Three kills already under his belt, 40 HP, and he's tucking in the corner. 
It looks like he's going to get this one easily with Mind Freak drop. That's his fourth kill of the round. The confidence builder, if ever I've seen one. And that's the last thing that Paper X wanted to give to their opponent. Again, not talking about them losing the round. That's expected. It's the amount of players still alive on Gen G. They're farming credits by the minute, but something has picked up one more. Three to go. One hell of a play oh if he made it. And it ain't going to happen. Look at that firing squad down below. Yeah, I think against any other team, maybe it'd have a chance, but Gen.G have been so good just playing off of each other, trading effectively. They don't even lose another member of the squad. Five and two, and I, I love the sort of switch up in tempo, especially in these anti-eco rounds. They're not allowing their opponents to really figure out anything that's going on. You had the instant TP to the back of sight, information clearing things out. The rest of the team quickly execute, and Karen actually sticks around. He just keeps the spot, keeps the control. Doesn't allow anybody to get too far ahead, and he even takes himself four kills while he's at it. So why not? This is definitely where on the side of Paper X you start to feel that, that mental pressure applied. Defense has been tested again and again. They failed the test again and again. Five in a row for Gen G. And now ultis are there. Showstopper fired off, and Mun yet had no chance. No smokes for the way back through. No paranoia to play with. Still some flashes on Divai, but Paper X set up with a man disadvantage on a retake. Seconds into the round. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to get back in here. As said, they're not bad in these 4v5s, but Gen Z are even better in the 5v4s. Opener again. Karen takes down another Forsaken, trying his best, but he's almost dead. It is his end. Well, Lackey and Meteor combined. Might be one of the fastest rounds we've ever had in the VCT. That was so quick from Gen G. And you could just see the more the confidence builds, the faster these takes are getting. Jinji are getting opener after opener. They've used a couple of ults, but they're also able to stagger them. Like you're talking about Showstopper used this round. Last round they used from the shadows to get the same sort of information. Although that's already back online. <laughs> Yay, oh wow. Huge. Hey, hey, you got them the space in the round prior. And then Kara got four kills. That's why it's back online. <laughs> well, this has to be a, a crushing one for Paper X off rip. Because again, they're left to weaker weapons in theory, but they've actually managed to mix a buy with light shields and full shields on something because he doesn't need a weapon. He's got five knives locked and loaded. We'll see what he can do with those. But the reality is, yeah, the, the momentum is very much in Gen G's favor. The economy is riding high after several reinvestments. Just take a look at their credits on that right hand side. It's looking pretty for a number of rounds to go, maybe for the rest of this half. Still possible for a 6-6 scoreline, but it has to start here with a much better defense. Now, we talked about the some aggression good. from this Paper X side, seeing it early on in rounds with a minute left on the clock. They're going for it. Good paranoia, but the fights don't go their way. Gen G winning out every single one. There's no competition, Tom. Barely a lick of damage done, and what is is negated by the heal. This is a disaster. Something might be able to save them. He's made big plays before with the blade storm. There's one. And not two damage, but no kills. Oh, oh, oh! Munya has a chance. Somehow this has come back into a winnable scenario. You just need to hit the bullet. Oh, that's so unfortunate. A nice try for the new man on the block. I didn't think there was any way that that round was going to become competitive. But somehow Munya made it close. The thing is, though, again, you just have to give props to Gen G. Like the beginning of this round, they were so ready. They had their whole team just waiting in mid, ready for that push to come through. And sure, the utility from Paperx was good onto a couple of the players, but the deeper players were so ready for that push to come in. It ends up being quite an easy fight. No, not even close, guys. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, you know, there was no chance of them losing that clean. I thought something would be the hero, but Mun yet they complimented his, his calling and his play in the video we saw earlier. And I can see why if he's fragging out like that. But again, uh, close but no cigar. Seven to two. Gen G finding next to no struggles. I've got your trail. Close opportunity for Paper X to clutch it, and this could have looked very different. But instead, they're on an eco. They've already lost something. Stingers to play with. The Sheriff on Forsaken. <laughs> And Texture's got confidence for days. He's, he's, he sees an eco and he's diving down into vents after them. The thing is, they've got so much control towards mid that they have to just be wrapping out from another position. But look how passive the players are. They know that there's going to be weaker weaponry, so they're just not giving them any of the close range fights. Powering up from above, there's not really an easy way to kill him. Maybe there is. <laughs> Somehow Munyak got past all the defenses. Even still, though, this post plant looks strong. 
nades still available. They've been taking these sites so quickly that they've had no problems just having late utility. Wow, the time almost looks like it's gone. Trying to bait some space, but it's all too easy for Genji. Another three-man player surviving. Eight to two on the board. And this is the pay this is Paybrex's map. They have lost eight rounds in a row. Other than the pistol in second round, they have achieved nothing. It's it's hard to think about. Even the round that was close, Tom, it comes on the back of the player needing a 4K to get it across the line. It's not what you want to see. Early on in a series, on a map that previously Gen G got absolutely obliterated on within their region, now they come to the international stage and... They might do well, one better. Yeah. 13-4 <laughs> us, well, 13-2 you. An opportunity here at least to shut down the first and the second one. Yet as well, Rockets on point. Spike and with Lakia down, down, it looks like Paper X are set to finally put another round on the board. Long have they waited. It's Karen to try to challenge, and he got an opportunity. But it was shut down eventually by something with only one standing. It's an easy win. Eight to three. Paper X finally back on the board, but hell of a distance yet to go. Yeah, and again, it comes off some individual brilliance out of Forsaken. Definitely had support. Uh, I think he, he doesn't get that kill if it's not for Munyet being able to kill off the close player, but it's at least a breath of life. We've seen them have strong attack in halves before, so even a sort of 8-4 scoreline wouldn't be a complete death sentence. I'm looking at two operators on the attack, though. Uh, that I, I, Obviously, it's something that can be dropped, but they are waiting for aggression here. And it's they, coming. It's coming. They ain't waiting in the right spot, though. Those ops are elsewhere. And that mid control is going to be completely conceded. The golden gun on Lakia. Good to see him showing up. Really swinging. I think he's currently 12 and 6, 2 KD on the board, and a chance to push it even further at 8 to 3. Paper X tried a mid push, got denied. Now it seems like they're caught one foot in the grave. They, they don't know whether to continue on that aggression or reset for the later play. And Gen G have not made a decision. With a minute five seconds on the clock, they don't need to rush. They're holding tight, waiting for Paper X to they're make so, the mistake. They're so nervous of so big within the smokes that have placed. Most of the time, those smokes are being put down by Monia just to deter aggression, which is exactly what it's done. Texture, though, might have a fight because they're so passive. The operator could be so valuable here. There's no one on the backside once again, but the spike is looking to wrap around in the other direction. A peek out from something. Oh, I think Meteor's seen him, but it won't matter too much for now. It's going to activate the dash. Something goes peeking, but now I'm just looking at that timer. TP into the backside once more. It's been cleared out, so the spike will be able to go down. This almost has to be a complete retake. Oh, nice shot by Lackey as well. There's his 13. Spike down. Spike drop. An opportunity indeed with that spike down. 15 seconds left. It's time for Gen G to get a move on. Munchkin has to step out from that corner and he's being caught. They need a dive on that spike and get it planted, but Paper X are in their way. Four rounds at the half. It's not a death sentence like you said, Tom, but Certainly nothing to celebrate. This has been a strong performance from Genji. Lakia leading the charge and plenty more left in the tank for this second half. You have to hope that Paper X have got something special planned on their attack because this was a really, really rough scenario for them to have to fight back from. Yeah, it, it is definitely a, a troublesome position to be here, but the, the fact is there's definitely still opportunities. Even still, though, you said Lakia's performing. Let's hear from him now. 안녕하세요. 젠지 스포츠 소속으로 활동하고 있는 라키아 김종민이라고 합니다. 무엇보다 플레이오프에 진출하게 돼서 행복한 것 같습니다. 일단 첫 스타트가 되게 힘들었었고 오늘 또한 첫 경기 자체는 되게 힘들었는데 그거를 잘 극복해내서 좋은 모습 보여줘서 기쁜 것 같고요. 이제 플레이오프에 진출이 원래는 첫 목적이었는데 너무 이루게 돼서 기쁜 것 같고 남은 경기도 이제 잘 준비해야 할것 같습니다. It leaves it down to just one player actually within the site. They have to go running in though. Karen might be able to just ruin their day, and that's exactly what he'll do. 먼치킨 선수가 젠지에 들어오게 되면서 저희 게임 스타일이나 그런 수준이 되게 올라갔다고 생각을 하고 그리고 이제. 네, 개개인의 실력 또한 이제 먼치킨 선수가 저에게 콜을 되게 많이 해주는 게 피드백을 많이 해주는 게 있는 것 같다고 생각합니다. 자신감은 늘 넘치고 우리는 준비되어 있고요. 
그리고 이제 진짜 더 잘하는 모습과 더 좋은 모습을 보여드리기 위해 잘 저희가 준비해야 될것 같습니다. 이제 플레이오프까지 진출하게 됐고 이제 또 경기들이 며칠 뒤에 올 텐데 그때까지 더 좋은 모습을 준비해서 저희가 이제 잘하는 모습을 보여드릴 수 있도록 할 거고요. 진짜 항상 응원과 격려해 주시는 팬분들께 너무 감사하고 팬분들을 위해 게임을 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. Well, it was third time lucky for Gen G last time facing off against Paper X. Now fourth time fantastic, at least kicking off in that first half. Eight to four when we left you. And now it's time for Gen G to close this map out. At least that's their mindset going in. Paper X, their attack side is about to be put to the test. And the big thing to write home about last time was something diving into sites. The thing is, he had a Yoru causing a lot of chaos for him. Now it's a little bit more conventional, but that's never the name of the game with Paper X. In he goes. Something's looking for a fight. Paranoia is perfect. Snake bites even better. And with one HP, lucky it doesn't stand a chance. The rest of the squad comes in to save him. But they've ended up falling to a three versus one with Meteor left standing and his back wide open. That's a mistake. Oh, no. And it almost was a costly one too. Yeah, yeah, the money I needed to hit that headshot at the end. No it looked like there was a, a realm where Meteor managed to turn that back. Even still, though, it is the pistol round for Paperx. And that is the thing. Even with this compositional change, the thing that it adds is, firstly, you're going to have that paranoia available for Munya to sort of set them up in, as we saw at the beginning of that round. But also, it just almost... We're going to continuously see the switch up of who's going in first. So you're going to have Forsaken, sometimes taking space for something, maybe if he has that Operator in hand, and something in that round taking space for Forsaken. They are a deadly duo, whether the Yoru is there or not. Well, there's a reason that they went to this comp oh. after all. Nice shot by Meteor. Opportunity for more, and he's landed that shot as well. Forsaken's very low, a big help to any teammates that end up taking that fight. We may talk about the outlaw, but this man's making it work with the marshal, the cheaper weapon. And okay, an opportunity uh -oh. if they had have spotted the player in the corner. Monet though able to deliver the killing blow. Mind Freak fell to a snake uh, bite uh, after being. Uh, oh, yeah. What is that push from Meteor? You will rarely see a man with the goal or the gumption to do such a thing. Karen, one versus so two. A serious opportunity. Yes, he's far away, but that might mean by the time he gets here, he could pick up a weapon. It depends though. Because Paper X, that's the thing. The blitz plays of Paper X have been so fast that there's actually still loads of time. They don't need to overaggress. They've just thrown out the guiding light, the flash, to get them a little bit of extra information. Still no weapon refound. Now, Karen does have himself a paranoia. He's brought up his full belt of utility. If he can somehow isolate one of these jewels, for now at least, it seems like he's waiting for that site to be taken. Smoke will give that away, the spike being planted. And now he can look to try and see if there's any gun to be had. And, well, there you have it. Thank you, Yeti. Yeah, we've got a Bulldog to play with, 100 HP. A Paranoia still online, both smokes. Timing is key. And they oh, swung nice. him together. That's a 3-2-1, perfectly on cue. They won the round, Tom. Three players down. This definitely isn't how they would have wanted to start it. And when I add to that that it's a martial headshot, okay, what can you do? And another martial headshot from a guy pushing a smoke close range, using it like a shotgun. That's not going to feel great. And the other player died to a snake bite. So, few kind of random engagements uh, that ended up well, nice. rocking the boat a little bit for Paper X. We'll see how they recover. When the thing is, as well, uh, the player you really don't want those ores to be going over to is Meteor. Three away from the Blade Storm. Even just a bit of damage in this round, and he'll have something for the next. Now, this purchase from Paper X has players now fairly low on cash. Like you've got Forsaken and Mind Freak down at 150 credits. So for the next round, they might be in a little bit of trouble. Forsaken, though, he's just gone walkabouts. He's sprinting after Lakia, but he isn't going to be able to land the shot. And at least for now, it's only going to be the control that's lost for Genji. No heavy price tag associated with it. Down in vent, this is an uncouth hole. Two players and they're dropping in, landing on each other's head. It couldn't be easier for Lackey, a sign sealed and delivered to this man with the heel up for his teammate. Munchkin's gonna be back up in fighting form. And in a 5v3, that's another nail in the coffin for Paper Rex, tagged up a little oh. on a ranged fight, and what an adjustment from Munchkin. Clinical, as now there's only two attackers standing. Their chances are looking pretty slim. Yeah, he almost killed 
Devai through the screen as well, so he's going to be half HP entering the site. They don't even know that Munchkin's there. A perfect reposition. This might be a flawless return to form as Devai's the only man left standing. A 1v5 scenario. Left. Talk about can he do any semblance of damage. As said, they invested some extra credits into this round, so the next round's not exactly going to be pretty. Wouldn't normally talk about saving, but I think actually holding on to a gun here would have more value, and he's just been seen of knowing exactly where he is now. I imagine there's going to be pressure placed onto this man. Blast packs could be thrown in, but it's just going to be the entirety of the squad looking to just jump down upon him within those last few seconds. Well, it's not even needed. First one gets the job done, and Gen G will extend their lead. Five players alive, you know? <laughs> it's a little scary, because it feels like since the very beginning of some of these halves, Gen G haven't had a problem when it, when it comes to economy. And I think for this six to nine scoreline, Paper X attack side, they get a decent buy out of it. You know, it might even seem weird if you look at the timeline. <laughs> you lose the third round after winning first two, what's the issue? The issue is the damage done. Two players alive coming out of both of those rounds. It meant constant reinvestment, and Paper X now left with a stinger and a sheriff light shields on most players. Some heavy disadvantages to play with, and that okay. orb, well, it, it, I mean, it kind of has worked because Munchkin fell into it, but. Uh, not doing exactly it's, what they it's intended. It's not going to cover up above. They've had to re-smoke it. Again, an explosive start to the round. Almost a kill. Well, I say almost. They've ended up with three. This is exactly what Paper X does. These fast-paced plays into the site. As mentioned, this was a weaker purchase. They had some pieces missing with that Sheriff and Stinger. Now that you look towards the players of Gen.G in this 2v4 scenario, Flash is already going to reveal Texture's position. And they've spotted Karen as well. Although I say that, the peek out never really came in. The player behind the back of the site should have probably seen him. Now it gets a little bit more interesting. Space given to Texture, but it's both shots landed by Mind Freak. He's been quiet so far, but popping a couple of heads with the Sheriff isn't going to go amiss. Well, this is definitely the time to wake up. You know, uh, we gave the same caveat coming into the last half, and then Genji ran away with it. But here, a challenge early on, and more importantly, a challenge with so many weaknesses on the board. I mean, this was a round where you have a couple of rifles, and what ends up winning it is a, a Stinger diving on the site, two kills out of a Sheriff to close the round out. Doesn't get much better than that. It was even a classic jumping around the corner to find one of those opening duels in Elbow. It's, it's also now, you've talked about it's eight rounds in a row that were lost, an 8-2 scoreline. The difference is now just two. Uh, that, that's how close Paper X have managed to bring this. Going on to their favored side, the B site under serious pressure. Half the team still waiting patiently. Karam's reposition is sublime. He's managed to TP behind them. He gets away with murder. Brilliant from Karam. We talk about picking this player out of ranked. He's put the rank play into the pro play. And it works. You know, sometimes you just got to throw out those curveballs. You're focused on so many different things. You don't think the lunatic's going to be up top, but my goodness, what a reposition from him. And clearly one that wasn't expected on the other side. And again, we fall back into economy discussion around this squad. They've been sitting pretty. They've been looking fantastic. They were able to obviously rebuy in this round because of the damage done early on. And well, they only really needed one of those rifles by the looks of things. A timeout called by Paper X <laughs> as they can now feel that it's getting very late into this game. We're at a stage where if Gen G picks up one more, they'll be knocking on Victory's door. So, yeah, 17 and 14. He's had a great game, but I think that double kill from Munchkin, that, that tripled his kills. Mind free. I said Munchkin, sorry, I meant Mind free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Munchkin's yeah. been doing well. Yeah, Munchkin's got for his triple his kills. Out. That'd be impressive. But yeah, no, Mind Freak's definitely had a quiet performance. I also think something, though. Like, we talked about the duelists in this matchup. Other than, I'd say, even Forsaken, they've actually all been a little bit underwhelming. It's been other players stepping up in this matchup. And I think that's really what we're seeing at the moment is the depth of both teams individually, but more so just that interplay. I, I think we're seeing much better fundamentals out of Gen.G, and it's mostly been those explosive plays from Paper X, like going off the back of a paranoia, everybody diving in together. And you see if it's even a slightly, a slight bit disjointed like that round, Karen just pulls out a crazy play and is able to win the round for them. 10 to 7. As you said, everything on the brink here. Seekers available. On the other side, a Blade Storm as well for Meteor, but I don't know if he'll use that in this round unless he sees the value. An immediate setup for the Paranoia, but this is a ruse. The spike is over on towards B. 
Costly ruse, perhaps. Forsaken. The decay is going to fade, but he's still half HP, and Munchkin finds it too easy to deal with him. One well placed shot, and he's down and out. Now we need to see the return for Gen G as another is found. Something falls. Two rifles still in play. Seekers still in play. And a few flashes here and there. One, in fact, just on Devai. Not a lot for them to fight their way back through with utility, but it's this man's position that might get them something. He's found another with the weaker weapons. This man's an animal. Oh, oh he's being put down. And for Paper X, they look to take it elsewhere, but those steps are heard. Meteor's in position, unbeknownst to them. He might have her trail, but, well, it's a little more difficult to deal with her cleanly. Mind Freak, the last man standing, 1v3. And Munchkin's already spotted him. He's a known quantity with a flank underway. Munchkin just needs to buy some time back off and let his teammates take it. He gets this kill. He's got himself a Viper's Pit to play with. Or if he dies, he's I suppose. Just, that's the thing. He's, he's literally just playing with him because he knows that flank is coming. I, 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 I really love it. Perfect. It was brought up by Lackier in the halftime interview that he believes that like playing with someone like Munchkin has brought a lot of depth to his own play style. And you can just see the intelligence even in this round. He, he literally just pulled Mind Freak towards him. He had no plans to fight him at any stage wants to just play the higher percentage play, and that's why Genji have been able to convert a lot of these advantages. And for Pay Breaks, I, a lot of the time I don't mind these gambles, but I feel like Forsaken has been one of the sort of glimmers of hope. So you were almost going, he has to get something, otherwise it's just now a push without him going into the site, and it didn't work with him. You know, the thing is for Paper X right now, it, at an eye test, you might think it's not doom and gloom. 11 to 7, four round gap, it's not that bad. There's a chance for them to fight back, albeit here with weaker weapons, but they've looked good there. The problem is, they've won four of those seven rounds off the pistol and follow up. Like, the, the injection of rounds early half yeah. makes this look like a much closer game than it is. But Gen G have been dominating in rifle rounds. Now they've got four ultimates to fall back on, up against weaknesses, but no Lakia. A big opening kill for the side of Paper X, as Heaven could now be theirs. Genji might start to panic, might make a mistake, and with Munchkin inside the smoke isolated, that might just be the mistake they were looking for. Oh, this could be big! Oh. He actually switches away! And it's just gonna be the shutdown, surely, for Meteor! He starts off the round and ends it as well. 12 to 7. This map looking over, as you said, in terms of buy rounds, we've barely seen anything. Three of them, in fact. Well, guess what, Mitch? They need five in a row. Five in a row up against four ultimates, no, only the Blade Storm that's gone. Like, keep in mind, Genji of a full buy with Seekers, with a Viper's Pit, with a Showstopper from the shadows. And so that's a lot for this defensive side to close out this game. If you remove those ultimates, it looks like they'll close out the game because they're winning almost yeah. all of the buy rounds thus far. The closer rounds for Paper X have been individuals, and they need to show up individually and together. Five in a row needed. And the challenge already underway. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah, he put Found down it. early utility to try and slow this push a little bit, but the fact is he underestimated the pacing. Lack here in the corner, but they expect it. He's stuck in the mud. Good utility usage in this round. It leaves now, Karen. He's had some magical plays, but they know exactly where he is. Well, it seems so. Munir goes bouncing past him. Now there is a flank, and no one really watching it, although it seems like texture. Was doubting the player behind. Also a 1v1 taken, but it won't matter in the end. A one versus five. Some serious mistakes needed, and Munyet's going to put him down immediately. Okay, there it is. The start of the way back for this squad. They've actually managed to deal with the vast majority of the ultimates as well there, Tom. Gen G have, are left now with just a Viper's Pit. We listed all of them last yeah. round. They got used, they found nothing. So not only winning a buy round, but winning a, a stacked buy round in terms of ult economy. And they've still got some left to play with themselves. The Blade Storm can help out. The Pit can win rounds. And with four needed, Genji are finally seeing some some negative uh, economic state. They're, oh, oh no, that peak from Lackey was not expected. Good flash too, and it's a double. He's got his teammate Meteor with him. And they're absolutely extinguishing the flame of Paper X's yeah. early fight. This squad's going to have to go back and reconsider, surely. Yeah, I, I like this. Just a direct counter. These A-side takes have been one of the major yeah, problems. Viper's pit, although they might just about win two duels. A little bit dangerous. Spamming. And because of that, being able to get rid of Meteor is a big pick. Because that was looking like map control and a man advantage for Gen.G. Instead, much more of a problem, and also bear in mind, Lackey is the only one who can't Check be healed. 
And th this, I mean, that cam there is very important. Just seeing something clear the spawn, you see how much space they lost. Because this Viper's Pit isn't just stopping a push, it's stopping all of Paper X's plans. Their plan was to blitz A. They get slowed, they get stopped, and now they have to go back and re-clear everything. Even if there's not a player flanking, if they're just pushed up in B main holding that aggro intel, you're going to find it very hard to actually dive in. Now, this TP is to B site. Up top, it's going to be broken last second with something down below, spotted and taken left. down. Gen G have the advantage. They're going to challenge oh, Munchkin no. inside the pit. And what it's a done. mistake down. that was. Welcome to his world with Mun yet the last man standing and a free kill presented. He's got three more to go. 15 seconds. He's found He's the four Ks in the past, Dom, but this is uh, this would be exceptional. It time. Good luck to you and good night. Yeah, it, it just wasn't enough there. And the fact is the running through of that Viper's Pit with the spike, they needed to clear that man out immediately. It did not happen. A stellar map, losing both pistols and only losing eight rounds. What a performance for the side of Gen G. It's even more impressive considering Mun yet on Paper X, a player that we've highlighted again and again. There was a big uh, talking point, not just from the desk, but even from the team themselves when they were being interviewed. And he comes out fragging. The calls were good. We had some good fake plays, but at the end of the day, this was a Gen G map. 13 to 8 doesn't sell it. This was convincing. And now they move on to their pick of Lotus after this. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings.